What's up guys? It's Amanda. Welcome back to my channel and happy Artsy Fartsy Friday. I don't know how, but I am sick again. I've been sick for like two and a half months of 2019 and it's only May. So I've been sick for half, half of 2019. Um, but if I'm a little bit nasally or stuffy, that is why. So I apologize in advance and please wish my immune system good luck for the rest of the year. But today we are going to be talking about enamel paints and custom mugs. So this is an idea that I had after my dad sent me the picture of a very tragic mug that I had painted him when I was about eight or nine years old. So it's about 17 years old if I'm doing my math correctly, but I'm not going to double check that right now. Unfortunately, this mug um, broke and he was very devastated and he was like, he, he kept it, he glued it back together, but it was no longer a functional coffee mug. Um, so I thought, well, what a neat idea to make him a new custom mug. And then that got me thinking about Mother's Day coming up and Father's Day coming up and I could just knock two birds out with one stone. I went down to the local Walmart and I picked up two coffee mugs from the brand Better Homes. They were like two dollars a piece and then I went over to the craft section and I found these folk art brand enamel paints. I did some research on YouTube and I figured that these were going to be the best paint for me. I was pretty sure I had seen them at Walmart and my intuition was correct. One thing you will want to note is that the paints you're looking for have the little wine glass sticker on the top and these paints also retailed for about $2 a piece. So this is a very cost effective custom gift that you can make for anyone in your life if this is something that you think you are interested in. So I picked up five of these paints and you can see I went for a very basic stripped down color palette. I picked up a white, a black, a red, a yellow, and a blue. So three primary colors plus a white and a black gave me a lot of variability. Basically the ability to custom mix any color my heart desires. Um, and that was the whole point. I wanted to be able to mix as many colors as possible without having to buy a lot of additional colors. So this was my method. Obviously, if you're going to be painting a lot of mugs, maybe you want to pick up a lot of colors. Um, these are very reasonably priced, so that wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing to do. But I have limited art supply storage, so five colors was enough for me. So in my video today, I am going to be talking about my experience using the paint, my experience baking the paint onto the mugs and curing it and the durability of the mugs, as well as just my experience working with this medium in general. This is a new medium for me. It's pretty new territory. So I just kind of wanted to walk you through all of that today. First point, I think these are a total win for the price. I think that they're easily accessible. You can just find them at your local Walmart, which is amazing. Um, so I think that they definitely get points for price and accessibility. As far as ease of use, I actually think they were really user friendly. Um, I thought they applied probably just like any other craft acrylic paint that you're used to using. It definitely was something that I, I had a pretty good expectation of how this was going to go on and it pretty much met my expectations. Um, dry time, I felt like it dried relatively quickly, although I felt like I was working pretty quickly while I was making these mugs. And you're already being kind of careful working on a curved surface, not to get your hand into the wet paint. So I felt like these dried pretty fast and I didn't necessarily stick to thin layers all the time, so I was pretty impressed with the dry time on these. It does recommend that you let it dry one hour between coats. Definitely did not do that. Definitely don't have the patience to do that. And then it recommends um, air drying it, I think, for one hour before you, before you bake it. Um, yeah, so those were the instructions on the back. And then to cure the paint, you can either let it air dry for 21 days, who has the time? Or you can bake it in your oven. Um, it recommends that you place the mug into a cool oven and then heat the oven to 350 degrees and then bake it for 30 minutes and then let the mug cool in the oven completely. The idea behind this is that you don't wanna shock the mug or the paint by putting it into an extremely hot oven or removing it from an extremely hot oven to put it on a room temperature counter. You really want that heating and cooling to be gradual. So you're putting it into a cool oven, letting the oven heat up to 350, 
bake it for 30 minutes and then letting that oven cool completely before you remove the mug which seems easy enough for me although i would say in my experience i tested the durability of the paint after baking it once and i did find that the paint was still relatively easy to chip off just by like scratching it with my fingernail so I baked it again at 350 for 30 minutes and I felt like that time around it really cured. So if you're finding that you're just a little skeptical of the durability of your paints, um, I baked mine at 350 for 30 minutes twice and I felt like it was a lot more durable. So just my advice from my experience, I'm not sure if anyone else has had similar experiences or could have any sort of explanation as to why it's not super durable the first time or maybe I messed up somewhere along the way, user error could always be a factor. But getting on to the designing of the mugs themselves, I started the design process for both of these mugs in Procreate. And I'll talk a little bit about the designs when we get to the time lapse portion, but um, I wanted to really be confident in my designs before putting the paint to the mug. This, unlike a lot of other art mediums that I use, is kind of a one-shot thing, meaning if I mess up, I <laughs> just wasted an entire mug and I would not necessarily have a second chance to fix it if I messed up. So I wanted to eliminate as many possibilities for mistakes or not liking the result as possible. So I, I basically just went to Procreate and designed the design that I wanted. Once I felt confident with the design, I just went for it. <laughs> I went hard in the paint, as they say, except you really only need a little bit of paint because they're little mugs, you know? Um, the only other thing that I did to prep the mugs for the paint was to wipe them down with a little bit of rubbing alcohol um, and a cotton ball. I was doing research and apparently what this does is it removes any oils from the surface of the mug and just makes it so that the paint more readily sticks to the surface. So that is something that I did, that I read about and was recommended to me and is something that I would recommend to you. So without further ado, let's go ahead and break down the design process of the mugs and get into the process of painting them. So for my mom's mug, I had this design in mind, which was actually inspired by my mom, and it's a play on words uh, with the word misanthrope, which is somebody who dislikes humankind and avoids human society. Um, this was my mom's idea, so she, I guess, self-identifies as a misanthrope or misanthrope. <laughs> and um, so this was definitely inspired by her. And I thought it would be a nice contrast to have this sort of negative word surrounded by beautiful flowers. So it was a very simple design. I was pretty happy with it once I got the text down. And then I went on to mixing colors. So for this mug, I really only had two colors, the pink and the green. So I mixed the pink by combining mostly red and white with a little hint of yellow to give it just some oranginess. For the green, I combined, you guessed it, blue and yellow with a little bit of white to lighten it up. I'm painting the flowers first because with this painting, obviously you kind of need to work from the bottom up. So because the flowers were in the background, I needed to paint the flowers first. And because the green was going to be layered on top of the pink, I had to put the pink down first. So I'm layering a little bit of white on the petals just to give them a little bit of dimension. This isn't necessarily a paint that layers super evenly. Um, if you were going to go for very thick, even coats, you would definitely have to apply this in several layers. If you don't mind a few brush strokes here and there, then I think one or two layers should suffice. I didn't mind the brush strokes at all, and in fact for the flowers I really wanted that fragile, delicate look, so one coat for the most part was good for me. Once I had the flowers and the greenery laid down, I moved on to doing the text, which was just as intimidating as you probably think it is. I used a very, very, very tiny brush for most of this mug and it still didn't feel small enough when I was doing the text. Like I mentioned in the beginning, this was kind of a one-shot deal, so if I messed it up, I was gonna be in big trouble. 
Um, there was a couple of points where I felt like the text got too thick and I tried to correct that by adding in some white paint to clean it up. But to be honest, I wasn't really happy with that look and I don't think you notice it unless you're really, really looking up close. But if I could go back and do it over again, I would just not worry about correcting it at all and just leave it as it is. It's still readable and the message still gets across. So I wish I had left the miss word just like it is now instead of going back and trying to fix it. But um, learn from my mistakes, I suppose, and definitely just take your time. If you don't have small enough brushes, go out and buy a smaller brush rather than just trying to make it work because um, this was a little bit tricky but still totally doable and I really like the end result. One other thing you might want to think about while you are painting your mug is whether the person you're giving the mug to is left-handed or right-handed. Both my parents are right-handed, so I wanted to make sure that when they held up the mug in their right hand, the design would be visible. So if your person is right-hand dominant, then they will be holding the handle of the mug in the right hand, which means that surface that's facing away from them is where you want to put that design. When you're painting a mug on a flat surface, sometimes that handle ne isn't necessarily level and so your design might be a little bit off to the side. It's just something to be aware of if you wanted to really make sure that that design was prominent and wasn't going to be skewed at all by the curve of the mug. I would recommend putting something underneath the handle to lift it up a little bit and create um, a more even surface with um, the handle <laughs> so that when your person is holding the mug, the design is exactly where it should be. Just a little bit of thought that you might want to consider when you're painting your mug. I would say this definitely comes into play more with complex designs that might appear warped at certain angles that you might want to avoid this a little bit more and put a little bit more time in planning. But for my first time painting mugs, I didn't really find that this affected the look of the mug overall at all. One little fun touch that I decided to add to this mug was a little design right where your thumb would go on the top of the handle of the mug. I just decided to put a cute little flower there. Um, I just thought it was kind of a unique touch. This isn't something you typically see with coffee mugs that you buy in store. So I thought this was just a little something extra. Here is a final look at the mug. I'm super happy with the way that it came out. I think it looks really nice. And just so that you have some sense of the durability, here is my scratch test. Fair warning, this would probably scratch off a little bit if you really tried, so I would stick to hand wash only. Now moving on to the mug I designed for my dad. This mug had to include the logo that was on the original mug that I painted for my dad. This is actually my dad's company logo and he is a graphic designer and so this, this is a logo that I see a lot and is a big part of our lives. And so I definitely um, had that sense that this logo was important to him when I was eight or nine years old and I painted him the first mug and I just felt like it had to be included on this mug as an ode to the previous mug and just an ode to my dad. So I knew I wanted to stick to a very bold primary color theme. In my original design, I had only picked pictured these splotches of color being directly behind the logo, but as I started painting it, I just felt like it looked odd only having the color in one place, so I kind of went a little bit crazy and just put the color all over the mug. You can see I switched to a flat brush. This allowed me to load up the color a little bit more fully onto the paintbrush and then get these really cool broad strokes. I switch the brush over to the side to get a little bit thinner strokes, but I really like just those broad kind of splotches of color. And I was pretty impatient and didn't wait for a lot of these to dry, so some of them mixed a little bit, which is fine. I think that still looks pretty cool. Um, there's parts where the paint is thinner and parts where the paint is thicker, and I just think overall it's a really cool, fun look. And as I carry this all the way around the mug, I just really ended up liking the feel and design of 
this piece. I just think it's, it's really cool. Um, so yeah, definitely, um, uh, be careful not to get your hands in any wet paint as you are working all the way around the mug. Um, obviously that, that, see, that seems pretty obvious. I know you guys probably know that, but it can be hard to tell when, um, certain parts of the paint is, is dry and then certain parts are still drying so as you can see here I ended up just putting the mug flat onto my desk and spinning it around as needed rather than holding it in my hand and risking smudging any of the paint unintentionally. Unfortunately, I didn't get any footage of me painting on the logo onto the front of this mug. It's pretty self-explanatory, and if you were able to see me do the very, very fine details on the first mug, um, I don't think it's too impossible to envision me painting on um, a much bolder, larger logo onto the surface of this mug. So I am very sorry that I didn't have that recorded, but um, that really finished off this mug completely. And this mug in general, I think just made me feel like a kid again, not only because I was recreating something that I created in my childhood, with a new fun twist, but just something about painting these abstract blotches of color really just brought out this childlike energy to me, and it was really fun, and it definitely reminds me of my dad, and this is something that I'm going to be giving my dad this year for Father's Day. And that completes my experience painting these custom mugs for my mom and my dad for Mother's Day and Father's Day. Obviously, I already gave my mom her mug for Mother's Day. She loved it. She was really excited about it. Um, and I will be giving this mug to my dad for Father's Day to replace the one that tragically broke. So this is mug 2.0. I will say the only thing I was kind of put off by about my experience with this mug in particular is that when I baked it, the white acrylic paint or enamel paint kind of yellowed in the oven not sure what that's about um not sure if that's an issue with the paint or the fact that i haven't cleaned my oven ever could be that <laughs> but it was just a little bit off-putting so word to the wise if your design is really focused on having a pure pure white element um, this might not be the paint or brand for you. But I think from a distance it looks completely fine and I think he will still appreciate it. I think it's a very fun mug. I definitely think of primary colors when I think of my dad and I think that these kind of cool paint strokes look really neat. And another thing I appreciate is the texture of the paint because I, I told you I layered it on pretty thick. Um, it really kept that texture and so it's got just like this fun handmade feel to it that I really enjoy. Um, and yeah, that was my experience painting these custom mugs. It's a super inexpensive craft. Like I said, I got all of my supplies at Walmart. I just used my regular old paint brushes that I've gotten from Michaels and Hobby Lobby over the years. They worked great for this. They were easy. The, the paint was really easy to clean off of the brushes and all in all, I would totally do this again. And I think that it's a really sweet gift to give to somebody in your life and it won't cost you a whole lot and it's something that they can hold on to and remember you by for a long long time anyway i'm gonna end the video here because i feel like i am just rambling on and on and on forever um and my nose is stuffy and i can't breathe out of my nose and talk through my mouth at the same time so thank you guys for watching side note i graduate this sunday from my master's program <laughs> and um kind of freaking out about it to be honest um pretty cool and exciting and wish me luck because on sunday i will be a whole new woman but until then i will see you on the internet <laughs> bye guys